Good morning, Sergeant. I'm Joanna Lumley. I'm going on the survival course. Not dressed like that, you know. Sam Hill! Escort Miss Lumley to the quartermaster's stores. One bag holders. One pair of gloves. One jersey. One shirt. One smock combat. One trousers combat. One pair of boots. Two pairs of socks. One head over. One pair of panties. Please sign. When the BBC asked me if I'd like to live on a desert island like Robinson Crusoe, I leapt at the chance. It had always been a childhood dream. But before I could be packed off to paradise, I was sent to Purbright for one day's survival training with the 1st Battalion of the Irish Guards. Plants, shrubs, roots, come in all different shapes and sizes, and vary in thousands. Another candidate for the course, sir, Miss Joanna Lumley, Company Sergeant Major Flanagan. Nice to meet you. Nice to you. Welcome to Exercise Survival, Mick. Take Thank a you. seat. Thank you. The four basic needs for survival are water, shelter, food and fire. The will to live is the overriding instinct and we shall begin that process right now. Platoon sergeants! He wants it! Number two! Three sections! There are three elements to a fire. Any plant is going to dip off the road and collect it. Water. Here we have a method. Shelter. Have a look to see where it's been. Two trees. If you just look up there. Move on now. Yeah. And again, as you can see the other side, and you'll be able to construct something like this in a couple of months. <laughs> We've now received the basic instruction on how to build a fire, construct an improvised shelter and obtain water. So all that remains to be done now is for you to put it into practice. So Sergeant McCulloch, I want you to take them away, get the patrol organised, get a shelter built, get a fire going, and get yourselves a brew made. And I'll be down in an hour and a half, and expect a brew going where I'll have a little bit of a sample. Understand? Right, sir. Right, take them away then. Double, double away. Could do a little bit more sugar out there. I hardly had time to digest this mass of information before we set off for our island. It lies about 30 miles off the northwest coast of Madagascar. The last leg of my journey was by helicopter. The crew steamed out on a luxury boat, which was to be their base for the next nine days. The French pilot told me that the island is uninhabited except for the occasional passing fishermen, and is called Sara Bangina, which means beautiful sands.
headed up the beach and waited for the crew and all their gear to catch me up. Now, this is what I've been allowed to bring with me onto my desert island. First of all, my sacking, on which I've laid everything I'm allowed to take. Ground sheet, mosquito net, insect spray, sun spray. First day's rations, water and rice and stuff in there. Torch, Irish guards, stuff, special survival kit, raspy thing to make fires with. SAS survival guide, some good strong cordage which I filched from Purbright. My two tucker tins, my little drinking mug. My trusty knives, two of them, small one, big one, and a belt to hang them on. A pair of socks, box of matches, good green string. Stuff I shall be drawing on, writing my diary on. Oh, over here, shoes, rucksack, which I'll carry around with me every day. Short sleeve shirt, trousers, things I insisted on bringing with me, my three cloths. I never travel anywhere without a cloth. They're useful for absolutely everything. And this uh, walkie-talkie, which they insisted I had, so I can call them when they go back to the boat every night. And here is my own personal camera, its equipment, its tripod. There's only one other thing that I brought with me. It was my crew. That's them. And here is Dixie, who's filming all of us. With the introductions over, I set off to explore the island. This is itchy. Oh. oh no, I think I'm going to cover up actually. I think I should have done this before I came. It's a bit dim. I think shirt and trousers on. Oh lordy lordy. That's nice. Put that in my tucker bag. And what else? Yes, limes. And I want yellow ones because they're the ripe ones. Oh, and they've usually fallen off. Oh, fantastic. Fantastic. Look, a little arch. That's, um, that's marble arch. Look at this. And those I know are the four brothers, because the helicopter pilot told me that. They catch a frere. This is great. This is the north side of the island, so this is the north beach. Oh, how lovely. Oh, 
This is lovely. I'm going there. Dry. It's absolutely dry as a bone. Tide doesn't get up here. That's fantastic. Look at that fantastic ceiling with all these sort of studded stones. In it. This is as big as the Albert Hall. And from here, actually, I can see Marble Arch. That's just about right. It took me about two hours to slog right round the island. And in the end, it seemed best to build my camp on the beach where I'd left my gear. Whew. It's boiling already. Now, where to camp, blah, blah, blah. Check your head for deadwood and trees. Plenty of edge of a wood. Nice of a something. Types of shelter. Well, I think I'm going to build an A-frame, which is a kind of two tripods which support the bed bits between them. And then underneath, you can build a shelf. And I'm going to face out this way. So I've got east and west, and I'll be sleeping north and south, which is very good for the spirits. So I need long bits of wood. Two. This is so hot and sweaty. The crew were desperate for me to finish the A-frame before the sun went down. After that, they returned to the boat, and the island was my own. I mean, look at that paradise, or what? It's just been the most incredible day. I mean, flying over the island and seeing, seeing it from the sky, and it just looked so beautiful and so sort of tiny and white sands and so perfect. And then we came to land, and it was unbelievably sort of alive with insects and a sense of flapping and suddenly the helicopter had gone and I was completely walking along the beach then luckily all the crew arrived so that was okay so off we started and we had such an exhausting I mean it's thrilling day having a look at the island which having looked at it from the top was oh, it's like a dream of it's like an island you draw at school you know my favorite island my treasure island got absolutely whacked making the A-frame Ah, I mean, I think it just sounds so easy. A couple of tripods and you put a thing across like a hammock and everybody goes, yeah, I'll just make one now, you know, to have it ready in half an hour. It took me five hours, I think, to make that thing. So let's see what tonight brings. And let's see what tomorrow's like. Tsara 
Bangina. Joanna. Right. How are you? Fine, how are you? Well, it was it was not quite as I expected because it was such a fantastic day yesterday that I didn't really expect rain and at about I suppose it was about one o'clock, I don't know, I'm guessing at the time at the moment. It rained and so underneath this I just lay and got wet. I mean it wasn't a hazard really, but it was it made me think that probably I've got to rig up this <clears throat> make some sort of a cover for myself. Um, I've been tying all these little bits and pieces on here to make to make a little shelf at each end because um, it's actually quite a long frame and that means that when I'm in bed I don't have to keep getting out and, tra and trailing around as I find my cost going out to the loo in the middle of the night. Sandflies don't care about which hour it is and uh, I just got bitten to pieces, so even though I'd got my lovely mosquito net, I got back in nursing a mass of bites, which was a bit of a hazard. So all in all, it was a kind of interesting night, but I have to tell you that compared with yesterday, this sky doesn't look too good, so I'm just going to have a little bit of a think about what to do. But this isn't bad, huh? This was sensational. This was the place to be last night. Absolutely gorgeous, and to be able to look out at the sea and... Just lie in here firm. It's as firm as a rock. I mean, thank goodness it took me. I know it took so long, and I got so whacked I didn't eat anything last night, actually. I was just too tired to eat. I got in here to test it out. <laughs> I didn't get out again. And then the rain came, so I couldn't make a fire this morning. But I will make a fire later on and get some tea brewing up. The rain clouds rolled in. So we retreated to the end of the beach to shelter. Water's nearly boiling, even on this little farm. What they say is Indian make small fire, keep warm. White man make big fire, keep warm, collecting logs. I'm an Indian. Not yet a very successful one, but... It's brightening up. I just don't trust this weather. There's a huge black cloud over there, so I've packed up my ground sheet and my bedroll. I've got everything I need in there. I've got some extra fruit, and I'm going off to spend the night in the Albert Hall, taking a shortcut through Mosquito Alley. Ah! Better. I'll just rest here, sit the storm out. I don't 
don't know if you can see them, but that's the crew leaving in dribs and drabs. Everyone's a bit down. We weren't expecting rain. Okay, well, here I am in the Albert Hall at night time. Storm absolutely raging outside. You can't see it anymore. It's gone pitch black. But it's lovely and dry in here. I've got a good fire going. With some purified water, which is rainwater collected, to put a water purifying tablet in. That's gone in there with some rice and the vegetable stock cube. So that's going to be ready in about three or four minutes. And this cave, luckily, although it's uncomfortable, I mean, it's very rough and a bit sort of shaly, at least you don't slip anywhere. So although it's dry, outside, but it's still scaly and shaly, at least your feet don't slip, although it's pitch dark. Taking my shoes off, the dreaded fish feet, which absolutely stink, taking the insoles out so they have a chance to dry off a little bit in this. And uh, here we are. That sounds very good. It's not in the sea. It's lovely dripping with the rain. It's very soporific. So when I've eaten my supper, I shall um, put my mosquito net. Not mosquitoes in here. That's another of the great things. Just not. A few little tiny moths came, but no mosquitoes. So I can use this as a as a mattress. Maybe pull one little ladylike piece of lace over me to sleep. And it's great, and I'd rather be here than on that boat bucking around outside up there with all the poor old crew having a bad time. <laughs> I'm a bit of a bad sailor. Okay, that's all from Camp Albert Hall. Good night. Today looks bleak, rough, choppy, but still we'll do a bit of filming and uh, we'll see what happens. I'm going to go beachcombing in any case. Well, as you can see, it's getting worse. I mean, look at it. And the crew's just phoned and they're not coming ashore today. So I apologize now in advance for the amateur photography, as today I will be the only cameraman. Good grief. Can you see that? Gorgeous piece of coral. Mm. That's coming back to the cave with me. These are just some of the things that I just found along that beach. First of all, this beautiful piece of coral, these extraordinary clam shells with such a huge bit. Imagine the size of the clam muscle that was hanging on, keeping those two bits together. Those might make nice plates or something useful. This exquisite top of a, I don't know, some sort of lobster or something, but it's got great sharp, beautiful horns, the most incredible coloring. And then, very tragically, but it's beautiful, this huge piece of, of turtle shell. Um, tortoise shell, turtle shell. They eat them around here, so I guess some fishermen have just sort of chopped it away or didn't want that bit and chucked it over, and, and I found it there. It's really beautiful. It's very sad, too. Anyway, people have to eat. And maybe they're eating, it's better than just wearing it. But still, I hate the thought of them being killed. These are just little spriggy flowers just to make it look attractive. These are the kissing rocks of Marble Arch. Originally, when I first saw them from the other side of the island, from the other end of the beach, I thought, I looked at it and I could only just see the archway, so I called it Marble Arch. Because one of the important things about an island where you don't really have any signposts or streets is that for yourself, you have to try to make everything have a name so that when you remember it, you go, oh, it was there, it was there, it was there. And you remember it. So this is Marble Arch. But as I came closer, I could see that in actual fact, it was the most perfect carving, a statue of little bear pigs kissing snoot to snoot like that. Ooh. That's the baby on the right-hand side. I've just had a seriously wise idea because it actually hurts a lot to walk around the cave because it's really spiky and scaly and like flint. And because you don't want to wear your shoes all the time, the fish shoes, A, because they smell so bad, and B, because your feet just never get a chance to dry out, but you can't walk around, what do you do? You take out the insoles from fish feet, you 
dry them out like that. You take your bra, and I'm going to somehow cut, cut this and make it into little sort of shoes like that. And for that, I use my sewing equipment from the tin, and I'll show you them later. a strange old day today. Um, the storm had gone down a bit in that it wasn't lashing with rain, but it was the sea was fantastic and so the crew couldn't land, they just couldn't get onto the island. I still got this torch on. This is a very good one, because this means that you know it's directional like a miner's lamp. The other thing was I kept thinking my my head, I mean, I know I haven't washed my hair or cleaned my teeth or washed or anything like that, but what are these great scabs? And in actual fact, it's all, this is a terribly loose kind of stuff on the ceiling, and it's, sometimes when I bang my head, it's an old cave gets stuck in my hair. I can't tell you it's like not cleaning your teeth, not cleaning your teeth, if you're somebody like me who cleans them at least twice or three times a day. I've been doing sort of this trick which I heard Africans do, you know, you try to get a special twig and you cook, cook, cook. All the wood I've been chewing, it's like chewing mahogany. It doesn't help at all. It isn't cold, it isn't cold, it's just everything is slightly damp. And tonight I'm going to take a bit more care with my bed because, I mean, last night was exciting and strange and timeless. It's very difficult to keep any track of time. I haven't any idea what time it is now. I, I ate supper about an hour ago, and it was, I think, about an hour ago, and that was about an hour after sunset. So it must be about 8.30. This is a success story. The, remember the bra I showed you and the shoes? Well, they've just become, I think, a triumph. Um, they're adjustable down the edges like that. That was the bra strap, so you can make it make them a little bit tight around the ankle. Um, that's, that was the cup, but it just looks like a most beautiful little espadrille. I sewed it down the side like that with some very good army thread. And this has made my life in the cave a completely different thing because before it was, I couldn't put on the wet fish feet because they were just so depressing tramping around in here with these sopping wet fish feet. Also, some huge blisters beginning to appear just from tramping about in fish feet all day. So these little babes are just peachy. So on that happy note, I shall bid you good night. at the moment but all the bad weather comes from behind those islands there the north end of my little island sometimes you just can't see them they just in in 10 minutes they just disappear completely under a sheet of black rain very slim pickings for supper last night that vegetable stock cube and rice is getting a bit tedious and uh, so I thought today that I might just go off and hunt for some food see if I could I don't know pick something or dig something up find something Vary the diet a bit. Foraging for food is an essential part of survival, and in any case, my pound of rice didn't look as though it would last for nine days. Sweet potatoes. Their vines along until actually are here. I'm in luck. A bit of a tree root there. Let's see what this one's like to dig into. Maybe the fishermen have dug this before. <coughs> OK. 
again, I don't really know what I'm looking for. I've seen them in, in Sainsbury's. What a hike. It's actually just a great long tuber, like a carrot or something. Okay, on and on, but holding on. I stink. I think I've got to think of potato collecting. I should just think of digging a much bigger and deeper hole. Also, I didn't know whether, like potatoes in England, whether you, you get one stem and in England you get a massive little potato. Oh, I've just snapped it. Secondary route. <coughs> well, I'm really thrilled. I mean, I actually am really thrilled. That's lovely. Nothing toxic about these. I can just clean them up and cook them. Actually, that looks like wood. I'm not going to eat that. Hang on, look, what are we standing on here? John, this is a turtle. This is a turtle. This is the turtle coming out of the sea. And it would go really s smoothly along here. And these are his little, um, going like that. Going up here. But there's another one, there's another one there. There's a great big hollow here. Things are looking up. Washing line up here with some homemade clothes pegs, just because everything needs to get dry and flush down there. And also, you can screen yourself off if you need to, not that you really need to. This is the kitchen here, kitchen area. These lovely bits of driftwood which came out of a ship or something, too far too good to burn. So that's a lovely upright, nice thing to hang my mug on. Um, chopping boards. These were just old bits of driftwood again, nice to chop. This is my little larder, carrot which I've had a bit of last night. My lovely little limes. My little apple berries, which I have on my tea. Delicious. But let me show you the tragedy of the bananas. In the bananas, there's no banana yet. 
So these, if I left them till they were grandfathers, would never have anything in them. So they look pretty, but that's all. They add a touch of green. Now this is the sort of most crucial area. I just have to do a little bit of work here on this part so it doesn't go out. You have to just tend to a fire all the time. It's like a little, it's like a child who's sick and won't eat properly. You have to just tempt it, you see. Would you like this little bit of wood? Would you like that little bit of wood? It's better stuff brewing up in there. This tripod I erect only for when I'm cooking. And this I made, I completed actually today, which is my little ladle, because it was so difficult trying to get stuff out of that black tin to see if it's cooked or not. So I just got to scrape the coconut, scraped it inside and out with my knife, got it all away, smoothed this stick, made two holes like that, jammed it in, put a string line there. The bra shoes are a huge success with this very rocky terrain in here. This is my bed, and at night time what I do is I just pull this out like that, and either the mozzie nets like that, or I have my cloth, one of these cloths, which I just wrap around me and try to hunker down. It's actually incredibly uncomfortable, but usually I'm so exhausted, it doesn't matter. Okay, now the last thing I have to do is to wash the vegetables. Then I can put them into boil. Supper. I wonder if you can see it. That's the little boat coming to take them home. Little glimmery light. Crew gone. Last chaps being picked up from the beach. Sunset. Well, what a strange day. I got incredibly dejected. I don't know why. This morning, I mean, on most trips, there's always a time when you, you know, you, you just have a bad day and you go, why am I doing it? It just hit me so much like an axe. I just felt utterly down, you know, very, very weak. I find being bitten by mosquitoes and things all the time, and sand flies, exhausting. <laughs> I'm rather lost by humor. Got into a bit of a sort of sad bait. I might finish this later, because what I'm going to do is to go and eat my supper and tell you what the yam was like. Okay, here I am for the second part of the report, just to say that supper was absolutely delicious. Those little tiny bits of yam, um, were delicious. Unfortunately, I had such a problem with the fire that I couldn't get it, I couldn't get it to boil, and oh, it took so long that by the time I'd sort of boiled it up, I thought, oh, that'll do. So they weren't quite cooked, but they really were very good. So I'm going to go out tomorrow and get a pile of those. Now look, I did a bit of smuggling. On the aeroplane, when I was flying out rather grandly, first class, thank you. I said, when they came around, I said, do you have a drink, madam? And I said, yes, some whiskey, please. Thank you very much. And I squirreled it away. And then the next morning at breakfast, and I had some honey on my thing. I took the honey out, scraped all the honey out, put it in my coffee or something, kept the little pot, washed it, and filled it up with whiskey. So this is my contraband whiskey. And as today's been a, just, a, just a tad gloomy, I'll just have a... Sorry, we are talking. Seriously, great moment. The other thing I smuggled in was um, an envelope from Jennifer Saunders just before I left London. I found it pushed through the letterbox, and inside it was just a collection of of little sort of envelopes and things, each one with something different written on for the for the island. Amnesia, uh, needing a reason to stay and enjoy the primitive culture. Vodka et patches prescription. Uninspired, preparing food, thinking of doing Hello magazine, lonely, delirium. So I think today could be thinking of preparing food. So let's just see what she's popped in here, something. I hope I can read it without my bins on. At home, whether you're having light refreshments or something more substantial, you will want the meal arranged so that it can be eaten within the minimum of fuss and disturbance, and you may find it convenient to have supper round the fire. It's a good idea to prepare individual dishes and serve them on separate trays with just the essential cutlery. 
to avoid continually passing back and forth, try to give each guest his own salt, pepper, etc. The trays can be prepared beforehand, ready to bring in between rubbers of bridge or television programs. Small tables and trolleys are invaluable when serving this type of meal. Make full use of any electrical equipment you may have, such as a hot plate, a coffee, a coffee percolator, toaster, vacuum judge to cut down journeys to the kitchen. Thanks, Jen.